Hey guys, thank you for checking out our video. My name's Sean Elders and this is Pinnacle Combat Arts. Like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell so you can be notified every time we get a new video. Today we're gonna to be talking about meditation and combat. Let's get started. I've been training, I've trained not only I, have I been doing martial arts and doing combat and been in lots of nasty, disgusting fights, but I've also helped combat military, law enforcement, all those people learn how to be a combat effect and be able to deal with our emotional experience that we're having, our mental experience and our physical experience. Mind, body, spirit. When, we're, when we think of the martial arts, we think of developing. When I think of the martial arts, I think of developing the mind, the body, and the spirit as one, okay? Developing those things as one. A lot of martial artists I come across will only be developing one of those or two of those things, okay? Usually the spiritual aspect is the part that they miss out on and maybe not even get to, to develop that until later on in their life or never, which is really sad. When we think about the spiritual part of the martial arts, we're not necessarily talking about a religion. We're talking about our temperament the way that we perceive the world, the way that we treat others. So our state of mind, the state of mind and how our mind and our emotions play a role in our physical movement is everything. It is everything. And so, for instance, when I've worked with military, we will, during our downtime, we'll talk about <clears throat> how, how, do we, how do we work through our emotional, emotional and mental state to be able to stay laser focused under high levels of pressure. One of those aspects that I always talk about is developing and learning how to meditate. Meditation is a key element to combat. Why? Because when we are under the highest level of stress, when we are in a life and death situation, we want to be able to be free from fear and rage. We want to be free from that that aspect of the unknown or what could happen or what did just happen and be able to be laser focused and be in the present moment. And so meditation, if you could just spend five to 10 minutes every single day developing your meditation, your ability to be able to be in the now, you will be able to go to that next level in your combat. When you start sparring or fighting, uh, getting in the, you know, if it's the ring you're doing or whatever it is, you will be able to be able to be free from that fear and rage. One of the easiest aspects on meditation, the way that I teach my martial artists, my combat sports guys, whoever it is, is I teach them how to do the meditation and how to practice it in what we call, first we do what we call sitting meditation, which is just sitting in a comfortable space, okay? Back nice and straight being able to, to have your arms and your body nice and relaxed, just having, making sure your back is nice and erect like this, and being able to breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. If you have any kind of deviated septum or anything like that, you can breathe just through your nose if you need to. But the idea of breathing with your stomach, not your chest, and be able to breathe, allow the stomach to go in and out as you breathe in, the stomach goes out. As you breathe out, the stomach goes in, and be able to be in that present so the first step would be to be able to, to get relaxed, get in a quiet place where there's no distractions, and be able to just get there and practice the breathing. The second step would be to be able to, once you've practiced that breathing and you've gotten that breathing down, the next level will be be able to just be clear and be start to become more present of what you hear, what you sense, if it's outside, the breeze, maybe the, the sounds of the birds, whatever it is, okay, if it's inside a room, being able to just listen to everything that's around, no matter how small that sound is. And so being in the present is key. The third part is, is when somebody, when you start to have a thought that comes in, if you try to push it away, you will not be able to get rid of it. It will just get stronger and stronger. So being able to accept that thought, acknowledge that thought, and let it go. And so the third practice is being able to acknowledge the information that's coming in and let it go and then get back into that state of being aware. So once we're able to be aware 
and we're able to practice that, we get better and better at it. And those thoughts and those, you know, those intrusive thoughts start to dissipate. And we start to be able to just be in the state of meditation or awareness. When we can practice this over time, when you start to spar, or you, you know, do your combat, you will start to see a difference in the, your state of mind. Okay. So the other part is, is doing what we call shadow boxing or in Filipino Kali, we call it Karenza, but moving around and flowing. And when we do that fourth aspect, this is the fourth aspect is getting up and get using that same meditative state, but in movement. And I call this moving meditation. We in, in, in Chinese martial arts, we call it Tai Chi or we do practice our Qigong, but we're doing a moving meditation. The idea is, is that you're still cycling your breath, still being super aware of what's around you. And if any intrusive thoughts come in, we accept them and let them go. But the idea is, is that being able to be in that state, for instance, with my military guys, we talk, we talk about it and it helps them get into that state of when I'm in a room and I'm, I'm sweeping an area that I am able to keep my mind clear so that I can stay aware, not be afraid when I'm going around that corner, I'm not being afraid what is gonna be there. Instead, it's more of a keen sense of what is there and how, do, how am I going to engage it. When we're training and practicing, if you're in the martial art dojo, you're practicing and moving and when you spar, the idea is not to think about what just happened and not to think about what you're gonna do but be in the state of awareness of paying attention to what that person in front of you is doing and seeing, being able to identify attacks and deal with those attacks and being able to identify the openings, using your timing and your footwork to be able to develop and see openings and counterattacks. All this part, all these things are so important and they're an imperative part of your martial art training. So what I tell you today is that to, to get quiet, Spend five, even five to 10 minutes a day and get, get in that space of awareness because it's gonna help you with your combat. I hope this helps. I'll see you guys next time. Panatukan, level one. This program is one of the most streamlined. It's over eight and a half hours long. It gives you everything step-by-step, step, everything that you need, fundamentals, breakdown, of all the exercises you need, understanding of empty hand, how to use fight without gloves, with gloves. It's gonna teach you all the aspects that you need about the foundation and fundamentals of Panatukan. okay? Unlike what we see a lot of times now in the combatives in the Filipino martial arts world, a lot of techniques, a lot of drills, but how do you make those drills go from the drill to actual real combatives. And that's what this program, this is the first level to that and getting you set up, learning all the aspects of how do I engage? What's the techniques? What do I need to practice to get myself where I'm able to be able to be adaptable in combat? Okay, that's the most important thing. That's what everybody's looking for. How do I get better? How do I get, how am I able to adapt when somebody attacks me. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? What I'm gonna do is I'm giving you a different perspective on Panatukan, unlike what you see in this modern day where you see a lot of drills and exercises that just don't translate to real combat. I call the meat and potatoes of combat. Not the fluff, not all the extra stuff, but only simply the things that you really need that are gonna help you be effective in combat. But the most important thing in combat is to survive. The most important thing is to be able to adapt, okay? And so that's what this program is all about. This is gonna help you go to that next level. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or you've been doing this for 10 years, I'm gonna help fill in those gaps, fill in those holes that you've never learned before. go to our website, pinnaclecombatarts.com. There you can find out more about what I do and the classes that I provide. Thank you guys so much for your support and have a great day.